Evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for a special replay of Mudhole Live's Snakeskin Inlay. As you may have heard, we lost a dear friend and Mudhole family member, Matt McGuffey, after a year-long battle with cancer. Known simply as Guff, he was a friend to everyone he met, and his sense of humor brought love and good vibes to all. Tonight, the Mudhole team is spending time at services with the McGuffey family, celebrating Matt's life. In honor of Guff, we're replaying a previous episode of Mudhole Live, which I co-hosted with Matt. I think you'll get a great feel for Matt's warmth and wit, and plus, learn a few rod building tips along the way. If you'd like to extend support to the McGuffey family during this difficult time, a GoFundMe account has been established. We'll provide the link, and you can find it on Mudhole's social media outlets as well. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Before we show Mudhole Live's replay of the snakeskin inlays, please take a moment to watch this tribute to our dear brother, Matthew Robert McGuffey. Ty Lines Guff, we love you. Well, hey guys. Matt McGuffey from Mudhole out here. You may know me by Guff, a lot of people do. It's not a photo though. Yeah, it's a video. We're just enjoying it. <laughs> it's all about the moment, you know? <laughs> now key it. Yeah. It's about to happen. It is about to happen. You ready? Just pull me sailfish as you can catch it. Another one. Another one. You're in the that? Girl. I don't think so. Dude, we just put a register mark on it because you said it once. And another one. <laughs> Mud hole. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. I think we're live. We're here. Hunter. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> what did you give up for Lent? Yeah. A lot, yeah. a lot. Oh, so as you can see, we got the guff man here tonight, Matt McGuffey. He is our uh, guff blogman. You do a lot of the writing, but beyond that, your, your main gig is certainly the social media stuff. I, I lend a hand wherever I can. It comes to social media, blog, catalog text, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I love doing every minute of it, for sure. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a great point guard, you know, for the, for the company basketball team that we don't have. <laughs> uh, you know, he's single, likes long walks on the beach, and Absolutely. rod building. So well, we got a ton of inbox messages about bringing on a hot blonde, and here I am. There it is. So that's what you get. CRB Pro, hot blonde. <laughs> there he is right there. So fantastic. All right. So with all of that out of the way, uh, and, and feel free, you know, to ask, ask personal questions on the show because he's new. Uh, of course, we've got everybody in the war room tonight. Uh, hopefully it'll be a big show. And, uh, you know, we've got Steve on the Zoom and Jay, of course, on the ones and twos as always. So what are we going to talk about tonight? Give me a little rundown. I think we're going to do some snakeskin. 
We're going to talk about where you can put it on the rod and uh, the different diameters you're going to have to measure to do it and uh, how you can make it look really clean and impress those customers. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to show a couple different kinds. Absolutely. As you said, we're going to measure it out. We're going to talk. Uh, what is it? Measure, cut, apply, finish. That's exactly right. That's what we're going to do. Now, we did, you did steal Hunter's credit card though, before he went on vacation. Absolutely, sticky fingers. That's it, which is weird, because I don't know how he's gonna get very far in Jamaica, you know, on the rum runners without a credit card. It's gonna be tough. He's texted me a couple times, I just haven't answered yet. <laughs> right, just leave him on red, perfect. <laughs> so, we have giveaways, of course. All, as always, we got some great giveaways tonight. For the, uh, the first giveaway, we're gonna do snake skin, a little color preserver to use with it. Nice. Uh, we got the second giveaway, it's gonna be snake skin, uh, color preserver, and some thread. Oh, and nice. then our uh, big giveaway. Well, and we always give away. Got to give away a rod kit, right? The, the big giveaway is coming a rod kit to you. It's an SJA42, a metallic multi-option kit. You're yes. going to get some snake skin, some color preserver with that too. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing it. So whoever builds it, you better send it on to us. Uh, no doubt. I mean, you've got, you know, you can't just take the giveaway, win it, and not, you know, and not show it off a little. That's exactly so right. You, so you got you to make sure to throw that in there. Uh, once you get it all built and everything. So um, we got giveaways. We did the new intro to the left-hand man here. Glad to have you. Happy to be here. Um, you think, are we ready to do this? Is everybody ready? We're we gonna run the intro, guys? I think it's about time. Let's get Snakeskin going. Here we go. Let's do it. There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. All right, we're here. Snake Skin and Lace, episode 70. It's, uh, I, I still can't believe that, that we're here. 70 episodes. You know, this far in. And you've been a part of a lot of them, let's a be lot honest. Of them. A lot Just of them. Just behind the scenes. You know, I got suckered into staying in early, had a good time, and now look at me. <laughs> That's it. I think the funniest part is I made it all this way. It's actually water. You wouldn't believe it. All <laughs> right, we always get those questions. And in fact, it is water. Look at that. All right, so. Uh, before we get going, we have to talk about the photo contest because it just recently ended. Uh, those gift cards have gone out. Um, we had, I mean, a lot of great entries, but of course, you know, the cream's got to kind of rise to the top. And, you know, we don't get an easy task in here of picking those winners. Never. So Never. we, of course, had third place. Joe comes in with the Nectar of the Cobbs. That was my personal favorite. Uh, it, it was just absolutely fantastic. You know, because I am, you know, a, a born again ice fisherman. <laughs> That's just, so, yeah. beer drinking, ice fisherman, we're all in. Joe, man, I had your back, dude. I, I, I loved it. So we, we appreciate that build. And then of course, second place, who do we have? Second place, we got Alicia with the uh, Just Bob and CRB Ultralight. Incredible build, awesome theme. She took it from the handle all the way out. <laughs> And uh, we loved it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, JD, man. Wow. I think you blew everybody away. Uh, it, was, it was a tight race, but uh, JD, that was, that was impressive. No I, I think the one thing I want to say about JD was we launched the photo contest, and day one, JD was in there. Yeah, with, it was. It was rod. just like, just go ahead and set the bar. That's you know, exactly it. Was like, it. He That's was exactly hanging it. on to it. He was hanging on to it. And we were like, yeah, so we're going to do this. And he goes, <laughs> Boop. Yep. Custom handles, bang. Yeah, hit send. So it was it was fantastic. And of course, we couldn't do any of this without you guys. And that is always in the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop. If you're not a part of that, you're missing out on 14,499 friends because we're somewhere around 14 and a half thousand people. Yep. It is the biggest, it is the best forum, community, everything all rolled into one as rod building on Facebook and probably anywhere, you know, in any galaxy oh, yeah. far, absolutely. far away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, that's where it's at. So now though, let's move on. We let's gotta go on. to the next one. Tell us about the next one. The next one we got coming up, this is a good one. It's gonna be guide wraps. 
So we want to see what kind of color thread you're going to use, you know, pack them real tight, get some up close shots. Nice. And uh, we look forward to seeing, you know, last one was some March Madness. This one's going to be some June Madness. Love it. And we're going to run it down to three, three finalists again, and uh, we'll have you guys vote for it in the group. So make sure you join the group, and uh, we'll see you there. Yeah, absolutely. So I think Jay's got something for us, though. I think we need to roll that, mm. and that'll get everybody fired up for, like you said, the guide wraps. The guide wraps. Fantastic. I mean, that's got me fired up. We, we saw some great work in there from a lot of us here. Some of the builders that we have send us some stuff. It's, it's good stuff. I tell Chris every day he can't win, but he gets so excited about the photo contest every time. You I know? do. I love it. You know, I'm in here tinkering with it, and they're like, yeah. It's just, you know, it's, it's one of those, like, you can't win the lottery if you work for the, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Right. You're doing great, but DQ. <laughs> that's it, right out of the gate. All right, so you all know the rules. We're, we're a couple... Uh, issues of this in now, but don't forget it's hashtag build to win. Got to post those pictures in the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop. Uh, you can run over there to Facebook. Mm -hmm. Again, we've got links. You know where to find it. And if you don't, come on. It's 2021. Step up to the plate. So run over there after the show. Kind of get your stuff laid out. Plenty of options from under wraps, over wraps, inlays, trim bands. Maybe you'll throw some snakeskin in there. We'll talk about that tonight. So, again, run over to the um, Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop. Uh, put it in there, and you've got all the way until when? You got till June 28th. We want to see all your submissions by June 28th, and cool. then we'll vote on the top three. Perfect. All right. And then, of course, you're winning 250, 150, and 100, I think? I believe so. I think that's what it was. I believe it is. Yeah. Sweet. If not, next time, get a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, cool. So... Now it's time to get into this demo. All right, so first though, we've done some homework for you guys already at home. Any of the products that I use on the show tonight, and we're talking snakeskin, we're talking the Pro Seal, we're talking finish, razor blades, tape, any of that stuff, the stuff we use on the show tonight, run over to mudhole.com slash MHL for Mudhole Live. And that's an easy landing page. After the show, run over there, and then you can go, oh, okay, yeah, that's everything I need. Uh, you know, if you don't happen to win, but you can run over there after the show, start clicking, run in it, throw it into your cart, and start buying. So Your one-stop shop for everything we use on the show. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. So we do it as easy as possible. All right, let's get into this. So I've got a couple rod stands here, and we are going to, I'm going to use this blank here. And I'm going to run you guys through the snakeskin deal. It's really not all that hard, so hopefully we won't keep you too late tonight. But we've got a couple different options here. Got it in the split grip. You can see I've already got finish on it. Of course, I added a little bit of trim band there. Uh, and before we even get that question, that trim band is the Pro Wrap Metallic. That is the 9510. Um, you can use it in A or D. Everybody always asks, what's the closest green to the MHX? This is the one, 9510. So that's it, Pro Wrap Metallic. All right, I've got it here. We put, I went ahead, uh, put the uh, Pro Seal on it, stuck it to the blank, added finish. But as always, we try to do things correctly. And I also like to show you guys sometimes what not 
to do. I will get to that in a little bit uh, when I get the document camera out. There are some boo-boos in here. I had to like kind of manipulate it a little bit to show an error so that you guys will know what can happen if you don't follow the steps. But we also have some different cooking show style out here um, and we're going to walk through that on exactly how to put all this together. So we will take, now we went over this before. Mm -hmm. So we've got rattlesnake. Absolutely. We have cobra, right? Cool. And then we've also got sea snake, okay? Um, there are, you know, a couple different options. These are kind of skin on, tanned. They're very soft, very pliable. This isn't just um, as some people will do it where they pull the skin and just air dry it just like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's not. Th these are actually tanned. There is, you know, a little bit of leather to them. So for those that are asking that question at home, that's how these skins are. They are very very durable. These are not brittle. Uh, they're soft and uh, they're very, very easy to work with. And the scales are actually very hard to get off. Um, maybe later I might show you a little trick of pulling a scale off to use it for something special, but these are actually very durable because they are somewhat tanned. So it's, you know, it's one of those things like, you know, some people might go, oh, I don't know, that's, that might be white snake. But, you know. Here we go again. It's Cobra. It's yeah. Cobra. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm well, a poison guy myself. We actually got a good question right here. Uh, David Roth, does the snake skin rip easily? Uh, we just touched on it a little bit, and nice. it, it doesn't. It's pretty solid. It'll hold up well, and uh, you can really do a lot with it. Absolutely. Fantastic. All right, so this is the easy way for me because I'm not a big math guy, hence I'm here in rod building. So, yeah, <laughs> exactly. What we're going to do is we're going to choose the section of the blank that we want to apply the snakeskin to. I'm going to work in between these two pieces here just to kind of keep everything in frame here um, and I'm not constantly jumping around. If you want to span long sections of a rod blank that tapers, you're going to want to put multiple pieces of tape because you're actually, and I think you guys have seen this before when we do it, we've used this with abalone, Anytime we're trying to find the circumference of a rod blank, this is an easy way to do it, rather than getting the calipers out, finding the diameter, and then doing multiplication with pi. So, you know, you could do pi D for that, but again, this is just so easy and it's very accurate. Yeah, and you're going to meet that seam up the whole way. Right. You know, you're, you're really doing a good right. job of that. And I'm glad you said that because I have a little bit of a cheat so that you don't worry about the seam as much. Mm. So we're gonna, we're gonna get to that for sure. So there's a couple different ways you can go about this. You can measure exactly, you know, if we're in between split grips here, like down in this end, but if we wanted to measure exactly here, we would measure it and then we would take that measurement to the snakeskin. What we can also do for just, you know, showing y'all at home, what I will do is, I'm just going to take a couple pieces of tape and I'm going to just measure a section here. I'm not going to do it exactly in between so I can leave some space. So in a sense what you're going to do is you're going to take a couple wraps of masking tape. Put one there and we'll put one here like this. Okay. So if that is the length that you want you've got it marked off. What I try to do is, I'm gonna pre-measure so that we're not just kind of winging it and holding the razor blade up and, and cutting it. So if we are going to measure, we'll take the measurement like this, and if we're gonna go on centimeters, we'll go on seven. So you can actually, you can turn the snakeskin over at any time if you want to write on it, if you want to draw arrows on it, if you want to give yourself a road map. I tend to always run, so the scales, you can see that there is somewhat of a pattern. It looks like the scales are all facing up this direction. So I tend to like to have the scales upward facing away from the real seat. Or get in a bind and go, oh no, what, which piece of tape is on the top and which is on the bottom, I kind of always know because I use 
this snakeskin pattern as my own roadmap, if you will, without having to draw on it. But you can take a Sharpie, you can make your marks on it if you wish. So that's that's just one of those yeah, tips. Yeah, I think we have a tip in the blog that you can do B and T, top and bottom, that kind of thing. If that works for you, yeah. absolutely do it. The blog? Yeah. <laughs> some people read, some people read. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> All right, so that is one option. If you need to span, you know, something like two, three, four, ten inches on a blank, you're going to want to put multiple pieces out like that. If, let's say, you have a rod blank that has very little taper in it, and you're only going to uh, run a very short piece like this, this is just, I don't even, let's see what this came out to be. Sorry, Steve. Thank you. All right, so that piece came out to be about one and a half. Uh, that's really pretty short. And of course, it's just over one inch long there that will cover that taper. There's very little taper in that short of a section. And I will show you here, I've kind of got a little bit of a secret weapon down this one side. So you can see I have the tape at the bottom that I'll get to in a second. And then I have an edge that is not a straight cut. There's a straight cut on this side. And then there is actually a jagged cut on this side where I actually just go around the scales. And I'll show that in a second here. So if you've got a small piece like that, I would probably say you could get away with one piece of tape. If you're starting to span longer sections of the blank, you will get into the taper and you will want to use multiple pieces like this. So then what I'm gonna do is if I'm going to select a piece here, I'm going to want to uh, measure the blank and then I'm gonna take those pieces of tape to this snakeskin. Now there are sections of the snakeskin that do look different than others. There's one where you actually have more of a diamond pattern. There are sections up here where the scales get very small and you actually have barring. So of course you, you're also gonna have these belly scales here on the outside where it's white. Um, if you wanna use, if you wanna incorporate those belly scales into it, you can, or you can come down here and just use the patterning. So let me show you here real quick what one looks like. I'm actually gonna get my document camera out. I, I just look like I've done this and before. And he sticks the landing. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's get her in view here. Oh, man. Okay. Sweet. All right. Bear with me, we're focusing. All right, sweet, there we go. All right, so this is using the scales section without the belly, right? So you can see there's no belly in it, and this actually, the pattern here actually helps the seam disappear. There's actually a seam right here. It takes a little bit of work, but you can see when you use the diamond and it comes across here in the front, and it comes back and it meets. So it kind of hides it there a little bit. So trust me, there is, there is a seam there. I know you guys can see it. I'm not that good, but there is a seam there. So let me show you now how we're gonna pick that section. I wanted you guys to get kind of that, you get your mind wrapped around that section uh, and what I'm talking about before I actually show you how to do it so I don't lose you. Because there is some trial and error built into all of this because sometimes you know you hit your target the first time and then sometimes you're like ooh that's not quite what I want. Well just like other builds though it's nice to see a plan come together you know. Yeah yeah it really is and then sometimes you just get lucky. Absolutely. You know so we can measure <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to mark on the top of this skin very very lightly and I mark on a dark scale where I'm gonna be at. And it actually kind of blends in. So 
I've got it kind of where I've got it marked and I'm just utilizing the diamond pattern in this. I just like the way that it looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a fresh razor blade because you do not wanna cut into the blank here. So I've got my tape wrapped. Now we're gonna come to the blank and now we're gonna make pretty much our guide that we will take the tape to the skin to get the circumference of it. So again, just be careful and we're just going to lightly cut through this tape. It doesn't take much to cut masking tape, so don't go crazy on it, okay? We've got it cut and then I actually just take the edge of the razor blade and I'm gonna pick it up. We're gonna peel it right off. That's a veteran move there. Goff, you don't need to pump my tires that much out here, right? <laughs> I love it. All right, so here's your circumference, right? You're gonna take this piece of tape and you're gonna transfer this over to the snakeskin. Now, a quick trick here, rather than taking this and measuring the distance, I take this tape and I use multiple layers. So I go around it two, three times so that I'm not just holding one thin piece of tape. You know, because sometimes when you're, when you're working with something that's kind of thin and fragile, and then of course the tape's sticky, it, it can get away from you really quickly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in half and just gently fold it and you match the corners. Then you take it and you pinch it very, very hard and it's gonna put a crease in the tape. So now we have a crease in the tape, kind of thin and fragile. I have my mark where I'm going to use this at. And I'm just going to apply the crease right there. So now we know the length of that tape is where I'm going to be using the skin. So like all of this out here and all of this out here will not get used at all, right? So you're gonna be just working in this area. And I'll do the same thing, seven centimeters down to the next piece of tape, and then that's going to give us our block. So I'm gonna press this down. You can do this on the back of this as well. If you wanna mark this, you can actually take and fold these skins over and mark them to mark the center. I've figured out after kind of monkeying with this stuff over the past couple days and, and doing the show before for y'all that <clears throat> this masking tape is not a high tack tape. Um, it's probably a little tackier than like the blue painters tape, but this isn't a super tacky tape. So I'm not pulling any scales off when I do this. And, and the scales that are on this skin are attached very, very well. So I'm not worried about putting tape on the skin. It's just one of those that it's not going to pull any scales off in, in my uh, experience. So no scales off your back, you know? Exactly. I'm glad you're here. Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pull this piece off. We're gonna do the same thing. So again, two, three wraps. We're gonna fold it over, kind of gently so we don't crease it. Now we crease it. And we're gonna take it down to our mark. Ooh, hang on. Don't press it too much. You get lined up. Oh, you're all good. I'm going to take this second to answer a, a question. Do it, bud. Is it real snakeskin from uh, Kansas Corkland? So we skipped step one. Step one, Chris didn't want me to do it. Yeah. Step one, you really got to take that snake out. So, yeah, they're absolutely real snakeskin. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Got it marked. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use CRB ruler. We're gonna cut straight edges on it. Um, you can use very, very sharp scissors. Please use sharp scissors. Uh, you don't wanna create any jagged edges on this because it will show. Or what you can do is just use a razor blade and a straight edge. That's what we're gonna do. Sure. So always work with, you know, buy the 100 pack of the CRB razor blades. Don't, don't buy the 10 pack, 
by the 100 pack. You're going to use them. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this out. And the the uh, the scales will kind of give you somewhat of a uh, of a guide. You know, you can kind of look along there. Cuts you a nice straight edge there. Mm -hmm. Now you want to do this on the nicest table you got, right? Yeah, yeah. Grandma's uh, antique one. If if you've got if you've got it, that's all. Don't tell her. Yeah. Don't no, no. Her. Just let her find it. Let her find it. Yeah. Surprise. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't even imagine. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Now we've got that. I'm actually going to show cutting these edges. I'm going to get the document camera over here. Let's see if we can make this one work. Uh, you, you seem to have a plan here. Yeah, right? Just, I can just feel it. Just snap this thing right off. <laughs> Cool. All right, we're gonna zoom again. And we're locked. All right, so just so we can see this, I already did the same thing to cut. Let me use my little, so I, I cut here and I cut here. So because we measured it, that was the length that we were gonna use, right? I shortened it up a little bit so that I could get it in between those other two pieces. And then now what we're going to do is we are going to line up tape edges. And you can see there's just a tiny little bit of taper in there. Okay, so we got that one. Just a, just a tiny bit of taper, right? So now I'm going to show you my somewhat little bit of a trick. Instead of coming to right here and cutting it, right, I'm going to come over a scale. So you can see there's a scale here, there's a scale here, there's a scale there, right? So I'm going to come over just a little bit so that I get those scales into the cut. All right. So now that I have those scales into the cut, I'm going to turn it here so I can see them a little bit better. And I'm actually going to cut around these scales here. You can see I'm just kind of, and you can slide this razor blade a little under that scale. You can see that there. Do the same coming from this side. And again, you're, it's pretty tough. You know, the, the skin is actually quite tough. So it's, it's easily doable with a, with a sharp razor blade, but it's not just gonna fall apart in your hand. And I suggest doing this before you get all of the stuff all over it that we use for the Pro Seal. And this is just, you know, I'm sure I'll probably get chirped for this guff. You know, guys being like, oh, well, if you had a better straighter cut or if it was exactly matched up, you wouldn't have to worry about it. But, you know, I'm just well, trying to show a little bit. You know, everyone hides a seam their own way, right? Whether it's out of sight completely because it's on the bottom side of the rod or whether it's out of sight because you couldn't find it if you wanted to. Yeah. That's, that's another question. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm trying to stay in the... Are we still in focus, Jay? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. I just want to be sure. Sometimes I'm like sliding it a little to cut, and then I don't want to... Oh, you're doing great. Yeah. Sorry if I'm breaking the fourth wall there, Guff. You know. <laughs> I know you movie buffs. Oh. You'll be talking about me while having craft service, right? Yeah. All right, so we're good here. Class case of emotion. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> All right, so you can see there, we've got our kind of cheat, if you will, 
I did the same thing with this one earlier as I mentioned. You can see, just let it hang over about one, one extra scale. That'll, that'll kind of help hide the seam, right? And as we had mentioned, I didn't mark the tape and I didn't mark this, but I know for me, this is the back towards the handle and this is going towards the tip of the rod going this direction because the way the scales are facing. So that's just, that's just for me. You could easily mark this uh, with a Sharpie or whatever, whether you do it on the front or the back. So, cool. All right, so let me get off of this camera here and we'll transfer this out to the rod blank. How about that? Sounds good to me. All right, cool. Get some of this high quality H2O. That's right. <clears throat> Sponsored by tap water. <laughs> That's it. It's the it's the distant cousin of smart water. That's right. right. <laughs> yeah. We can't all be smart water. No. All right. So we have the tape on here, which now can come off because everything's been measured. You can do kind of a little a little test fit to see how much you boogered it up if you didn't, you know. So. I think we might be all right. I'd bet on that one. It's going to be close. I'd bet on that I one. I think it's going to be close. Shouldn't, shouldn't have done it on live, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right, so we're going to pull it off. But the good news is it does stretch a little bit, especially when you get it coated in Pro Seal. It will stretch. I think that's a question, typically, right? I think they said it, it stretches just a little bit. I'm going to guess it is a question. I think you just answered it. Yeah, OK, cool. But now you're predicting questions. You're that much of a pro. Easy now. What I think we need to do, speaking of snakeskin, and I'm going to get the Pro Seal out. Oh. We need to do a giveaway. You want to get one away? Let's, yeah, go ahead. Get that, that credit card out. Oh, let's see. All right. Today's first prize, snakeskin and color preserver, is going to be Bill Leary Jr. from Facebook. Congratulations, Wait. Bill. Remember, we want to see this snakeskin in action, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't be hiding the game. Get it. You put it to use. We don't want to see boots. If you put this snakeskin on some boots, we're not going to be able to share that. So. <laughs> right, exactly. You're going to need to build a rod, and uh, yeah. we'd love to see it. Build to win. I don't know, I don't know if we're going to do a boot section. We can't do it. We can't do it. That's it's not going it. to be enough for your boots. We're going to tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah. Low tops. Chuckas. You could do chuckas maybe, but that's it. <laughs> maybe. All right. So we've got Pro Seal in here. You don't need a crazy amount of this. Um, I just poured it out so that you could see it. That's really the only reason. I will just take this bottle and just dip it right in and, and go to it so that I don't waste really any of it. Sure. But just to show you guys, I put some out in there. And uh, the good news is, uh, this is, it's easy to work with. It's non-toxic, it's, you know, water-based. So you can get it on your hands. You can get it on your wife's heirloom table. You can, you know, wherever. Absolutely. Now, uh, just for some people who would know, with like cork rings, when you're doing a handle, you would kind of just want that sheen. Is this something similar to that, or do you want a little more? Uh, this one, you're going to want to be a little more liberal with mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. if, if I may. So yeah, it's, it's going to be something that the skin, because this is real snake skin, and it does have a leather component to it because it is a tanned hide, uh, it's, it's got to soak in a little bit. Sure. So, you, you know, just barely like dusting it is not going to work. Um, we are going to want to put it on a little thicker than that. Absolutely. And you don't have to rush with this. The, the Pro Seal is not going to dry on you and, you know, there's not like a, it's not a five minute. No. You know, so don't worry about that. Now, the, the good news is under most temperature and humidity conditions, it, it doesn't take all that long to dry. So you can set it and come back to it fairly quickly, mm. you know, and, and then you're locked. It's not something that you got to let it dry all night and, and all that stuff. So we're, we're good there. How are we doing on questions, sir? We're doing pretty well. We're answering a, a, a good amount through the progression here, but let's see if we can knock one out here. Uh, Jeremiah Gray uh, wants to know what the thickness of the snakeskin is. You had to hit me with that one, didn't you? Well, you know. <laughs> there it is. Very, very scientific. It, um, I really, 
I really don't know. I would, I would venture to say that, I mean, it's gonna vary, don't get me wrong, but it is the thickness of probably like a really nice vinyl sticker. Mm -hmm. Like a nice vinyl sticker. Sure. Not really like paper thin, but you know, because it, there is like a little bit of skin and scale and stuff like that, it's, it's gonna be good. Now, to transition that into Tyler's question. Absolutely, Tyler Coffee. Yeah. What about snakeskin or abalone cause any performance issues on a rod more flexible like a fly rod? I'm going to keep all of that into more of the butt section. Absolutely. If I'm doing abalone, a lot of thread work, snakeskin, I'm going to keep it down in the butt section. Sure. You're not going to put a, a seven inch section of abalone or snakeskin up like the second section from, from the bottom. From the top, I'm sure. Sure. So yeah, I would keep it everything down near the handle, but you can absolutely use the snakeskin or abalone down in that section. The only thing is you got to be careful about you know the diameter because mm -hmm. I remember I think on the show last time it's been a couple years somebody asked about an ice rod. Absolutely. Completely okay to do it on an ice rod, but the diameter is so small you probably it would be like this you'd have like two scales, mm -hmm. a front and a back, and, mm -hmm. that, and that's it. You know, yeah. if I was going to do that. I would do something like uh, a decorative handle. I would take a carbon tube and put snakeskin on the handle. Absolutely. Or over some cork, not over EVA. EVA can be too squishy, and then you try to put, you know, handle and, and stuff like that. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that goes into John's question there. I was just going to say the same thing. What John about doing Wolf, it on the handle? Yeah, John Wolf asked about doing it on a handle or putting it over a cork. I also saw that someone asked, uh, Matthews Terry asked, uh, will snakeskin glue to cork? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it looks pretty good too if you take your time and do it well. It, it'll look really sharp. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it really does. And then you would just do it like anything else. You'd put some finish over it and use the, the Pro Seal because the Pro Seal, not only does it help seal it, it also has a little bit of an adhesive to it. Yeah. I, I think one thing I always think about too with like, let's say it's a four piece fly rod, you're going to spine those top three sections. You're not really going to flex that handle section much, or at least yeah. you shouldn't uh, be able to yeah. flex it much. And yeah. that's kind of the same thing when it goes to uh, decorating it too. So like he was saying, you keep it down to the handle because you know it's a safe bet and it's going to look really good too. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we'll get this document camera back over here. Yep. I think everybody likes this thing. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Let me zoom out a little bit here. I didn't think, you know, I think sometimes it like gets my feet. <laughs> and, yeah. Get my feet. Yeah, right? Well, you got those new vans new on. New shoes today, new shoes today. Here we go. Ooh. All right, now we're locked. Okay, so we've got the snake skin here. We've got color preserver on the back here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick where we want to lay down the print, okay? So the print, I want it to be more in the center, and I'm going to just tack it here in the center. Because now you can see it, it's pretty, you know, uh, pliable, I guess you would say, right? We okay on the zoom there, Jay? We locked in? So I'm just going to lightly work this around. And you can maneuver this around pretty good. And go. All right. And kind of in your experience with air bubbles and avoiding them, uh, does the light pressing it down, you know, versus in a hurry, you would rather take the steps to do it right, nice yeah. and slow, right? Yeah, and, and, and I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm working with the scales, more just because if I went this way, I, w I would catch a scale and it wouldn't slide. So I have a little bit of color preserver on my hand and it kind of helps it slide it. Mm. So I'm just working it around and that way I'm not like tugging on it too much. And then now... Nothing 
quicker, drastic, nice and slow, methodical, pressing yeah. it down, pushing yeah. the air out. And then you can start to see there, there's a little bit of color preserver that kind of mm -hmm. works its way out. And then I'm just kind of massaging that back down there. And you can see pretty close to nailing right here on this X. You can see where the light and the dark ones kind of come together there. So, and I'm just going to kind of keep working the color preserver in to it because that's just going to help kind of lock it all down. And then you can see when we come around here to the other side, you've got a really nice clean pattern there. And then you come under here. And one of the things that I did is, let me get this ruler. See if you can see this. So this ruler is the line under my reel seat, okay? So that's the seam on my reel seat. And I know it might be a little hard to see because I did a pretty good job, but uh, the seam is actually over here a little. And here's the, the scales where I cut them. So the seam is actually offset a little bit. And for me to talk about that just for a second, we'll come up off this document camera just so I can kind of explain it. So, Guff, when you think about a clock, mm -hmm. right, and you being the fly fisherman that you are, sure. 12 o'clock at the top, 6 o'clock at the bottom, you got 9, you got 3. Right? You don't want that 6 o'clock fish call. No, you don't. So we're working with a clock here, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9, 3. So, and this is not something that I came up with. So I, I cannot take credit on this. I learned it from, you know, watching a couple of these other guys that are incredible at this stuff. You had me going. Whether it's, yeah, right? I could have just led you, you down that, that path Ooh. and just, yeah. So we're talking, uh, whether it's abalone, mm -hmm. whether it's a vinyl decal, something like that. If you, if somebody hands you that rod, you're gonna go, oh wow, that, that looks great. But of course, you're a rod builder, so you're gonna go, I'm gonna see what this seam looks like. Mm -hmm. Now you go right to six o'clock because everybody hides a seam at six. Absolutely. You turn it to six and you go, huh, I don't see a seam huh. because maybe you worked it over to like 4.30. Mm -hmm. So now you go right to six and then the seam is, it's a little back down this way a little bit. Sure. So now you don't see a seam at six, you don't see one at 12, now you really got to hunt for it, and then now you're just that guy. And then it's you have like, time to grab it back from him and say, uh, Yeah, you're like, oh, that's pretty cool, huh? Not yeah. too bad, huh? And then, you do the, then you do one of these. Yeah, wow. That, yeah, you whip it back and forth. Actions, that's it. That's right. Maybe yeah, 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 yeah. Flex on the ground. So sure. that, that's just one of those things that I've been lucky enough to pick up from some of the guys that are just over the top good. Oh, yeah. So I try to pass that information on to y'all. So back here on the document cam here real quick, I'll show you. We're just looking at that seam that's kind of offset. And then we want to make sure, because you can actually get up under that just a little bit. We do not want the seam to cause a problem. Because I made it cause a problem, and I'll show you what happens when it causes a problem. The good news is Pro Seal dries clear. So we definitely want to be sure that we go around the edges. Mm -hmm. And in all reality, you're probably going to be putting trim bands on the edge of this stuff. Uh, you know, we, we made a nice clean cut, uh, so it's, it's got a really nice straight edge. It's not jagged. You can, run, uh, you can run your trim bands right up to it. And of course, I'm gonna kind of work this in somewhat, just applying a little bit of pressure. And also, my, my hand will kind of also manipulate those scales down a little while, you know, it's, it's almost like running a bead of caulk on a, on a bathtub. It kind of helps clean it up a little bit and it helps remove some of the excess. I'm gonna knock a question out real quick because I like this question a lot. Okay. Uh, I think he knows that I do social media. So uh, Ryan from YouTube wants to know, he did a 24 inch tiger after the tiger video. Now he should, wants to know if you should do a 24 inch snake skin on the next rod. You know what? I couldn't be more excited. Let's see it. Show us what you, you know, got. Ryan. I love it. 
I absolutely love the it. The challenge is on the table, Ryan. It, now it's in, your, it's in your court. That's it. The snake's in your jungle. And we want to see it. No doubt. Well, I think we're going to have to use that somewhere yeah, else. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Like I yeah. said, I write all the words. <laughs> yeah. He writes all you the know, lyrics. If, if you cooled up with the show, you fell for it. You're here now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. You've been waiting all week for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was running by Chris, slither on over, coil up. I like coil up because it makes you force you to sit here and watch it, and that's uh, what we want. No doubt. All right, so there we have it. That is kind of, sort of, how you go about that. Um, the next move is going Next move's going to be finish. Um, let me kind of clean this up here on the edge because I don't want to get in the finish. Um, I though, you know, the, the question always comes up, are you going to put multiple coats? Mm. Yeah. Go ahead and start mixing for me there. Yes, sir. Got your pro coat ready to rock. Mm. All right. So the question always comes up, how many coats of pro coat, um, on this kind of deal, the last thing you want is for this finish to get up underneath these seams. Um, I would love to say that I purposely did all of this. I, I tried to like not get this piece of snakeskin sealed as well as I could in hopes that it would booger it up. Uh, and it did. Um, so let me show you what can happen when, I'm going to have to move this camera a little bit, sir. Actually... I'm going to just do this. So if you can see, this is how you can get an air leak and it honestly just looks like somebody spit on it. I don't, I don't really know, Guff, what else to say but that. It just looks like somebody hawked a loogie. I'll be honest with you. You did fine. I just came in here that night and just... You got me, didn't I you? I let her drip one on. I dripped <laughs> one on there. I thought it would be funny. Good Lord. I knew it. I was like, man, what happened? I thought in the wrong run it'll help. That's it. So this is what happens because this seam right here didn't get sealed enough and I actually just like picked at this seam to see, oh hey, maybe did it get glued down enough? And I must have kind of disrupted the seal right there. So that's what can happen. So you get just a migration of air out underneath this snakeskin and that is just, you can see there, I see it raised up. And it's, it's just, it's a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys can, uh, can understand that. But that's what happens. You can mess it up pretty good if you don't, if you don't let it. Otherwise, it looks, it looks pretty good. And this is also the trim bands there, that uh, 9510 is what we were using. So blocked it in there. Use it with the MHX grips, but you know, at least I guess, Guff, the good news is this is on the underside. That's right. I could technically cut this out with a razor blade. Just gonna see how, now that we've got it, how bad I can mess this up now on live. But we could probably get in here and cut this out. Yeah, I could probably do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save that for the uh, I'm going to save that for the big finish show. I was going to say so that'll be a good one. Big so finish, yeah, repair. You can you can shave that right off. Mm -hmm. All right, let me shift back out here to the different snake skins that I have, and I'm going to show you kind of what I did, how we adjusted with the materials that we used, and kind of what it looks like. All right, so we're going to work our way from. Kind of tip to butt, I guess you could say. All right. Somebody asked earlier, um, I don't remember the name of it, but the real seat uh, 
real seat to rod blank, the transition. This piece right here is probably my favorite winding check in the whole bunch. Mm. It's this TWC right here. It fits um, in front of any of the Fuji seats. It fits in front of any of the CRB seats. Uh, it's just a tapered winding cone, so TWC 16, because they make it in a 17 and they make it in a 16. This is a 16 body seat, so there you have it there. And then what I did is I just ran the snakeskin right to it. So this snakeskin here, let me see if I can adjust it to catch some light. You see there's a, sh there's a shine on it. See there's kind of like a, a little bit of a, the, the light's catching it. There's multiple coats of color preserver on this and it has a very smooth kind of shiny feel to it. That kind of gives you the indication that, all right, this is ready, it's prepped to put finish on it. If it's still, if this one still felt like snakeskin a little too much, I would probably put another coat of uh, Pro Seal on it. Now, the other option is, moving out here to the end, the other option, and this is not one option that you want to use in the house. Steve, I'll let you work the zoom on this one. This is Permagloss. So Permagloss is a really great product. It is just something that is very, not only is it flammable, but it says the vapors are harmful. And boy, they're not kidding. So it, uh, you know, luckily we got a big room in here. We got some good ventilation. Otherwise, I do not recommend using something like this, you know, huddled in, you know, a small room the size of a portalette because you will be on the moon. Rod, rod building on the moon. That rod's going to turn out wild. Let's yeah, be absolutely. That rod's not going to be what you want. No. So let me slide in here. So we've got, what I just showed you is this one here is the, the first one. This has color preserver on it, okay? This next one. This is the one we just did with the offset seam. See if I can get that seam. You can just see it right there. I kind of got it on the edge. There's the offset seam, right? That's drying. Now, before I let this go and uh, dry completely, even though it's tacked pretty well, I actually take tape. Some guys go on top of it like this, sticky side up. I actually take it, I'm sorry, sticky side down. I actually take it and do sticky side up. No, and I go with the seam. So the seam is coming this direction to me and I'm wrapping this direction to me as well. And then that way, even though, as I had mentioned, you don't get any kind of, uh, the tape really doesn't pull these scales up. This is more for those at home that, you know, I mean, granted, I don't think anybody's gonna use duct tape to do this. Please don't, I don't recommend doing that. But if that's all you got, I guess that's what you use. But please don't do that. So as a precaution, just take the tape and I'm just kind of pulling it over the top, adding a little bit of pressure there and it works out. And you can see right there, you can see some bubbles coming out here. Right there, there's some bubbles coming out. And that's just me applying the pressure properly. And then I take and leave a little tag end like that. And I fold it over. So then we can just pull it off in a minute. So we'll pull that off in a minute just to get it out of the way. But that's what I do. I use the sticky side up and it does, it does a great job. I was gonna say, it takes the air <clears throat> out, and also, I can't spit on that if I wanted to. Right, exactly, it protects so, it from you, and let's say, you, know, you know, everybody else. Absolutely. You know? Rod building saboteurs. Mm. All right, so, moving out a little farther. So this is the same snake skin that I just did here, using, trying to match up the, the pattern. This has color preserver on it. Not as much, I didn't completely coat this. So we're gonna put finish on it in a minute. And then this one out here, you can see has a little bit higher shine to it. This one has permagloss on it. So 
And I'm showing you this here because this is kind of what happens when you don't offset a seam or you don't hide it. So now you have a scale here, a scale here, a scale here, a scale here, and you just got a line through it. And it's just kind of like, I feel like I'm better than that. Sure. You know, and, I, sure. and from what we see from the group, <clears throat> so many all are as well. So really, if you would have just possibly continued this, this piece a little bit longer and then added a little bit of a cut, just so that you're not cutting a piece in half and then work your way in and out, kind of create a little bit of a jagged edge. Sure. You probably would have been okay. Absolutely. So the good news about this is permagloss, this guy right here, using this, I use that instead of Pro Seal. The reason that I did that is this is just a one part humidity, air cured. Uh, again, please be careful when working with it, but it's non yellowing. You can put an ultra thin coat on it, it seals it very, very well. And this has some specific uses if you don't want extra epoxy buildup. If you want to use very, very thin, if you're going to maybe match a decal up to this or something like that where you don't want high relief. So coming off of epoxy down to the blank, now you've got different heights of things. If you want to seal it off with the permagloss and then butt some thread up to it after the fact, you're not dealing with big gaps and humps and things like that. But then now you have to come back and to to completely level it out. How, sure. many, how many coats are you gonna have to put? Probably four or five coats. With the permagloss, it's super thin. Right away. So, yeah. yeah, that's an option. All right, so you got us some finish, ready to rock. All right, let me pull this off just to get it out of the way. Yeah, and I think while we, uh, while we do that, maybe we'll do the same place giveaway. That's a great idea. I feel like I've got some free time. All right, for the second place prize, we got snakeskin, color preserver, and 18 spool thread pack. That is a great thread pack, by the way. And digital calipers. Sweet. Pie times the diameter. Digital calipers are great. <laughs> uh, second place prize is going to go to Jeff Johnson out of YouTube. Jeff, congratulations. You're going to send me an email to claim your prize, and it's going to be mmcguffee -E -E at mudhole.com. M. McGuffey at mudhole.com. That's my direct email. Don't abuse it. Perfect. You'll have like uh, people trying to buy uh, a ton. your used car, like, oh, all kinds of yeah. stuff. Oh yeah. All right. So we've got some finish here. I don't put the finish on immediately. Just as we've talked about with um, putting it over a decal. Absolutely. I try not to put what I call, you got, I, don't, I don't know if it's the right term or not, but I try not to put hot finish hot over something. Finish. Nobody, hot. Likes, nobody likes hot finish. Hot finish. No, you don't want that. So what we're going to do, we're going to throw it in the old wire chuck here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you doing okay? Oh, uh, we're doing great. Yeah, you got some people down, didn't you? We got a, a quick warning from the producer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is good. Yeah. This is good. Something about the hot finish doesn't mix with the HDMI, as they say. We'll you know, see. I don't know. I was going to say. That's on you. No pressure. Have some faith. <laughs> yeah. Because he sees it right there underneath it. I like <laughs> yeah. it. I like yeah. it. Perfect. All right. Let's get this thing fired up, and let's get some finish on this cable. <laughs> All right. We got it down. Got the wire chuck. I'm a big, big wire chuck guy. Big fan. We got brushes everywhere. All right, now again, we cut the brush. You can see a nice little straight edge there on the brush. Not hot finish. You can see it's gonna go on just really smooth because it almost has like a polished kind of effect on it because of the color preserver. And while you're talking about that, uh, Chris Tebow said, will any glue work to hold it to the blank? Tim Tebow? Yeah. So, yeah. His brother. Yeah. All right. Oh, and of course, you know me. I like it spinning at me. Um, you don't have to use the Pro Seal. I do because it's just one less thing I got to buy because mm -hmm. I've got the Pro Seal already for doing all other kinds of things. But you can, uh, if you're really gutsy, you could use contact cement. 
Mm. But remember, it's stick it and it's stuck. So you got a problem if you need to manipulate a little bit. You use any of that contact cement like we do with EVA. No, I don't want to out you. You better be full, full but confidence. I feel like I've seen you take a few pieces of snakeskin off the blank. I have. And that was because you used Pro Seal. Exactly. That you're able to do that. That's a great point. So it's all about your confidence. Yep. And you know, because like you said, if you've got to move it around a little bit, or mm. if it's got to come off, mm. I would use I would use Pro Seal or something similar. There, are, there's a couple different uh, products like Tight Bond has a couple different things. But what I wouldn't do is use something that's like, uh, you know, super glue. Sure. I wouldn't do anything like that because if it's got to come off, it's got to come off. All right. So this is just a very thin coat. Just a very thin coat, but you can kind of, it's, it's catching the light really nicely. Um, I like a thin coat on top of the snakeskin because we're going to do multiples here, so it levels out very nicely. Also, a very thin coat of Pro Coat will help seal everything even better. Um, the snakeskin thing, it just, it just takes some baby steps. You can't, you can't really rush it. It doesn't take all that long, but there's just some baby steps in this thing. So, yep. Now, go ahead. I was going to answer a question real quick, easy yeah, one. please do. Low-hanging fruit, Manny Martinez, is the snakeskin available in the catalog? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. All, All, of right. them. All of them. All of them. Perfect. What else we got? Anything else? Let's see. Oh, we Let's already got see. the what Let's type of glue. We can see. get rid of him. See. Oh, yeah. Nailed it. Uh, what's the average length of a snake wrap? Mm. You know, here at Mudhole, we sell it by the inch. I don't know what the longest section is that we have, but down the warehouse, there's a couple hammers down there. Oh, like, for sure. I, I'm Ooh. like, Ooh, that snake must have been, whoa. Right out the Everglades. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, the great part about that is you can buy it in any increments mm -hmm. and just call one of the customer service folks downstairs. We've got guys, girls, everybody, great customer service, willing to help. If you have a very unique length that you've got to have mm -hmm. that maybe you might think, ooh, that's kind of long. I don't know if they're going to have that. Maybe 24 inches. Right. Give them a shout and say, I'm going to do this. I really got to impress everybody mm -hmm. on the Mud Hole Live Rod Builders Workshop. I've already owned up to a 24-inch snakeskin wrap. I'd be calling Mud Hole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Somebody will go in the back and go, oh, we got the perfect one for you. That's right. All 20, we'll probably even, if you buy 24, maybe even throw in an extra inch there just, just because we like it. I don't know, because you, you gotta have a little bit of wiggle room, right? Absolutely. So you better buy 25. I would go Better buy 25 inches. Yeah, I would do 25. So anyway, all right. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna move on. I'm going to see, and of course, you know, we always do this stuff live, so sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. I'm gonna try, since this is maybe still a little wet, I'm gonna try and get this to mess up because I'm just that guy. I'll just do all, I'll just do some work and then mess it up because it's probably been what, maybe 10 minutes? About 10 minutes. About 10 minutes since five, I did five, this? Five, 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. Perfect. Yeah. So we're gonna put some finish over this. Now, now Chris will never mess up on purpose, but for you guys, you're lucky. I'll do it. You know, do that's, it to it. That's the exclusive. I'm gonna see if it'll, so that you guys can see what happens so you don't mess up all your work. And one really good way to see if the color preserver is not ready is the color preserver is white as you've seen it. If you've got a little too much on your seam, it's okay, but you're just going to have to let it dry longer. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, if it doesn't mess up, are you that good? No, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and drip some uh, epoxy on this HDMI cord. <laughs> yeah, real quick, real, real quick. Yeah. Exactly. Jay, are we good to go ahead and drip it on here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. As long as we get We're the shot. Like, oh, oh, what is that? Yeah. Coming, Coming in from the booth. He says as long as we get it recorded. 
It's okay. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little heat to this and see if it can. Yeah, I feel like I've never been now around you, cameras before. Now you can't put the flame to the camera either? Yeah, right? Oh. How am I supposed to work under these oh, conditions? These rules. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to let that spin. And hopefully we'll come back and it'll be all kinds of boogered up. All right. Um, so the, the good news is if we moved out to the snakeskin that has the pro seal on it, I'm sorry, the permagloss on it, you can take and put pro coat over the top of cured permagloss. I haven't had an issue with it, so um, you can go right over the top of it. So if you just need thin coats like that, or if you need to come back and you need to add some more to it, that's going to be, you know, just fine. So I'm trying to see if we're getting any air in here yet. You can see it's kind of trapped. Let me see. It's sort of, let me see if I can zoom this in. We're coming, we're coming right into your living room here, folks. Yeah, that's right. All right, so you can see it's not dried right there, so it's kind of milky. That's the pro coat that's not dried yet. So that's a good indication that you didn't let it go long enough. I think you can see that in there. It actually looks okay. So in here, there's your seam. It will get kind of milky looking on you. And that's a good indication of you just didn't let it dry long enough. So. Real quick, I'm gonna knock another question out. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's knock out two questions. David asked from YouTube, could you put a decal on top of the snake skin? Oh yeah. Now, you can do it in two instances. Mm -hmm. If you're afraid that it's going to build up too much, do the permagloss or a very thin coat. Now just remember, the snakeskin has texture to it. So you're going to have to get a perfectly level base. Yes. Yeah. So if you're using something like um, if you're using something like the rattlesnake that we had, you can see let's see if I can get that in there. See, so you, you can see the scales in that skin. You can actually make them stand up, right? Mm -hmm. So they have a very, you know, high relief up off the skin. If you're doing something like this snake's uh, sea snake, the sea snake is very flat. You can see it there. It's, it's just very, very flat. So there's really not much to it at all. It's probably even a little bit thinner. Um, this is something that you could put a very thin coat of finish on and let it rip. Absolutely. So that might be a great option if you're really trying to do some decals and whatnot. I want to have one, uh, one more question here. Cody Creel, my man from YouTube, we talk all the time. Miss you, can't talk to you this time in the comments, but here I am, would you believe it? He said, uh, can you use snake skin as an under wrap on guides? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and it looks pretty sharp. It really does. Take your time, you know, follow the steps that we're talking about here and uh, it'll look good. It'll reward you. It'll reward you big time. Yeah, no doubt. And that would be that would be the same instance where, you know, you would put some pro seal over the top of it, let it dry, and then you don't have to put finish on it if you don't want to. Sure. You could come right on top of that where it's already sealed with pro seal. Mm -hmm. Then wrap your guide wraps right on top of it and then just finish it all in one fell swoop if Absolutely. you don't want to do that. Absolutely. So, yeah, perfect. All right, cool. Um, this one is still, it's starting to lift a little bit because it wasn't dried on the edges, but it's not going crazy yet. The other one I didn't, the other one was like spending maybe 30 minutes before it really started freaking out. So, um, but it's already kind of messed up because of it in here and it's mm, you can see it. there's your see I can kind of move it around you have uh, your your pro seal is not going to cure once you got finish over it so it's going to be left kind of kind of milky mm -hmm. so don't do that folks at all all right that's it and and you and you're good to go so now I do want to share something that I did so we've got I'm going to move this out of the way mm -hmm. I'm going to leave the document camera there and uh, 
this is just going to ruin itself. So that'll be fine. All right, real quick from YouTube, are you using alcohol to clean that up in reference to ProSeal? Yeah, you can. You can. That, that, regular, that regular alcohol will clean any of that just fine. Like you can take some water and clean ProSeal up sure. with because it's not, you know, a solvent base. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've got rubbing alcohol. I just kind of use it for everything. Oh, yeah. So you got a cabinet. I've seen it. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right. So this is something that I did while I was messing around. And Guff, you're a fly guy. Sure am. Thanks to you. I'm going to throw this document camera over here so we can get a, so can grab get a look here. So what we've got is we've got an MHX native. And we're using a single scale on each ferrule as an alignment dot. So some of the guys use decals. Mm -hmm. Some people use like an ink spot. Some people do that. Now, the, um, the ferrule wrap on the male side of the ferrule down here is not required. The reason that I did that is just so that I would have a base for the alignment dot, which is the scale. You could, and that's kind of why I matched the thread to the blank, the blank somewhat. Mm -hmm. Now, you could have not done thread here and just stuck the scale to the blank because it would stick just fine. You really don't need to put that there. I'm still using ProSeal. I'm still, you know, this is probably the first time, and I can't tell you how long, that I actually put Color Preserver on top of thread. Mm -hmm. You know that's just not my thing. Yeah, that's not your thing. I just don't like it. Mm -hmm. So. This here, though, it, it's fine. It's kind of a decorative thing. It, it's not going to, you know, uh, have any ill effects on the wrapping, of course, because sure. of the Pro Seal. It's it's great to use. Mm -hmm. So, I did one coat, and then what I did is, <clears throat> I took one of the pieces, one of these pieces right here, that I was already using, and I chose a darker scale like that as opposed to a lighter scale. Now, if we were using something like maybe instead of the this color in the native eight weight, mm -hmm. they also, as you know, I they do. come in satin black. Satin black. So sharp. Ooh, it's yeah. really good. And of course it comes in a six piece as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So you would maybe use maybe a lighter scale, right? So what I did is I actually took and it's very hard just to pluck one of those scales off without tearing the skin and then creating kind of like a hangnail look to it. So I actually took and I wrapped this and I just came up under the scale and I just kind of shaved it off like this. If you're keeping track, that's a fresh razor blade. So that's two razor blades. Yep. Two out of a hundred. Two out of a hundred. Get the hunter back. So, and now we just can pluck that right off of there. And there's your scale. So, not too bad. You just kind of flex that skin over something to get those, uh, to get those scales to stand out. Shave it off with a fresh razor blade and then you're just gonna stick it with your Pro Seal. So, that's yeah. kind of a, an extra little tidbit that's the leading edge of rod building right there. <laughs> the leading edge. The pinnacle. Leader. You're getting it straight from here. That's yeah. Cool. All right. Um, so we've got a couple more questions. Now, yeah. I didn't want to throw, you know, the, uh, what do we call it? The lightning round? Or the, the lightning round. round. Did we do that? Was that, is it the lightning round? It was I can't fun. remember. It was one of those. It was, it was a fast round. Yeah, it was a fast round. So anyway, I'm not going to throw that with you. Um, but we will answer a couple more questions here. How about so, slow pitch, slow pitch round. Yeah, maybe like rookie of the year. Yeah, with the floater. Yeah, nice. So we've got Nicholas coming out of YouTube. What kind of skin is that in the split grip? The one that I had before. This one here. This one is the Cobra. So that would be this guy. The old white snake. Poison. Def Leopard, right? Def Leopard. So that's what we're using there. It does darken just a little bit, not, not too much. And of course, every snake skin does have a little bit different pattern to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's very unique. 
And you know what? I'm going to show. <clears throat> we actually didn't show this earlier, but I wanted to show this. Yeah. So this is one of those Pat Van Zandt rods. Just an absolute. You want to talk about leading edge rod building. He's done around. some incredible stuff. And I'm going to show you here real quick on the document camera because it's worth talking about. Oh, yeah. So let me back this out a little bit so we can see. All right. So this is one of those really, really cool uh, what you can do with the snakeskin. Actually, I'm going to show you in the fighting butt section first. Okay. So here we are in the fighting butt section. He's got some custom cork down here in the butt. We just did that on the show. Mm -hmm. So now we're incorporating some snake skin here, and you roll it over, and you start to get some of those belly scales, right? So of course, you know, the snake being somewhat round, that is these scales that are out here. This is these long kind of belly scales, right? So you can incorporate that in, or depending on uh, if you don't want to, like I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. So I chose a different section of the snakeskin so I didn't have to do that, and I just wanted all these plate scales. Now, he really went over the top up here, and this is the part I wanted to show you. So when you choose from the snakeskin, you know, you have some sections that are this wide, and then you've got some sections that are this wide. So it's very, very, you know, there's a taper to all these snakeskins most of the time. So you've got your plate scales here, but what he did was when he measured it, and now you turn it on the underside, now you've got the belly scales that almost look like it's the perfect where they come together exactly. And he showed the seam, and I actually think that's pretty cool because he showed the seam where the belly scales come together. So you got plates and then you got bellies all in the kind of one deal there. So this is the top of the rod. So you can see there's the top of the reel seat with those scales. Of course, he's using a little cone here with some trim bands, and then there's the belly on the underside of the rod there. So I thought that was really, really neat. Very sharp work. So, and then of course, your trim bands as you see fit, whatever you want to do there. Sharp. So yeah, absolutely. I've got a question out of YouTube. Uh, Jeremiah Gray is actually citing a question from William, <laughs> impressive. Uh, what is the expected life of the skin on the rod? Uh, Longer than the snake. <laughs> Longer than the snake. Absolutely. Now, the good news is, once it's under that finish, you're good to go. Whether you're using permagloss, mm -hmm. or you're using Pro Coat, or you're using Threadmaster, any of that stuff, it's good to go. Once it's, it's sealed under that finish, it's the life of the rod, for sure. Good deal. No doubt. So don't worry about that. Um... David, is there any finishing coat that isn't as shiny? He's going to hit me with this one. I was going to say. You know, David, there is. Mm -hmm. there, there is a one-part matte. I think it's a one-part finish. Matte finish. Mm -hmm. It is. I don't love it. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, man. I, I got to shoot you straight there, David. I, I just don't love it. Um, you maybe, maybe you could, you know, do something where you take one of the finishes and you let it cure for, you know, a long time, maybe instead of just your eight to 10 hours, maybe let it cure a couple days uh, and then hit it with some steel wool. Maybe it'll take some sheen off of it. I haven't messed with it. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't done it. And I also just, I don't love the matte finish stuff. I just I'd, say, I'd say a lot of the rod building stuff is exper experimenting and there's nothing wrong with experimenting on your own as well. That's a lot of what yeah. We're doing in here, what he's right. doing in here. If you can't find Chris, he's in here tinkering with something, guarantee it. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to try it, I'd give it a shot. It's yeah. not expensive. Right. So maybe you've got an application where it'll work great. I, I don't love it, but you know, that's just, I think we owe it to you to, you know, I try to give my two cents. Absolutely. You know, when it's, when it's worth it. But um, hey, if you try it, keep us posted. Yeah, please We'd like to let see us it, know. we'd like to know. Let us and, know. Don't test it on like a brand new build. Yeah, definitely. I would use it on test. a broke rod, yeah, yep, maybe yep. on a, uh, a dowel rod, something yep. like that. One more question um, from Alvin. Uh, will the tape pull the scales off? Uh, if you use masking tape, no. We recommend using masking tape. If you use anything stronger, yep. we can't say, but we wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, and now we're, when we say that it won't pull the scales up, we're talking about these snakeskin pieces that we have here mm -hmm. that are tanned, that are kind of that leather-backed, if you just take the skin, air dry it, 
and you don't do it like this, mm -hmm. this the scales will come off. If it's just like, you know, uh, if you find like the snake skin out in the wild where it's like shed, mm -hmm. those scales will come off. These are not. So we've, we've used it here, they're, they're not. So, um, yeah. I will say, if you're looking to tan your own snake skin, there's a guy in our own Rod Builders workshop that can help you out. Uh, Jimmy Kramer has been uh, sharing a lot of videos and tips with us. Cool. Uh, we don't kill him in the house and tan him, yep. but uh, he does. So if you have any questions, awesome. definitely look for him in the workshop and join the workshop to ask him. I'm still wanting to go down to the Everglades and get one of those invasive pythons. Talk about 24 inches. I mean, you got Easy. plenty. Easy. Plenty. You could, uh, Easy. You could do one of those like 13 foot surf rod blanks, tip to butt. The whole thing. The whole thing. So If you wanted to. Right. Um, yes, David, don't cut the snake skin scales on the kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. you, don't, you don't need to do that. <laughs> That's right. Um, bum, 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 bum. Dan, when's Hunter going to reveal why the Benford? I'm going to leave that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that to Hunter, Dan. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. We all know. That's a Hunter we question. Know. It's good. It's yeah. good. You know, just, we actually had somebody come in here today and go, huh, that looks familiar. And we go, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. Exactly. Um, what would you use to condition the skin as you use it to help it last longer? Leo, uh, to be honest with you, we don't store this any fancy way. We don't condition it. This is not, we don't have like a special snakeskin humidor down in the warehouse. Um, it, you know, we're not keeping it like out in the snow or out in like on the hood of our trucks. I would, I would, you know, kind of err on the side of not going crazy in extreme temperatures, but this stuff lasts great in air conditioned warehouse. I mean, the other warehouse didn't have AC in it and some parts of it and it was fine. So um, there's really no conditioning or anything to this type that we do. Um, again, I have seen guys working with it when it's not like a tanned one and you know, they have to like, you know, put water on it or like, you know, do some stuff to it. This one you don't have to do anything to. So just use your Pro Seal, cut it, stick it, and you're, and you're ready. Yeah, and you pretty much hit John Wolf's question. What has to be done to the snake skin in order to be prepared to put on a handle? Yeah, basically the same thing. You would size yeah. it, you would cut it, you would do your Pro Seal, and you're on your way. Absolutely. Add your, add your Pro Coat and you're, and you're ready to rock. So um, somebody asked, what about the fish skin? Uh, I think if it's prepped, properly, mm -hmm. I don't see why you couldn't do it. Um, you know, if, if you're just using the skin, I'm, I'm not a taxidermist <laughs> and I don't, I don't know how to tan stuff and I don't know how to do that, but yeah, I'm sure you can do it. Um, and it would be pretty cool because yeah, be. like you mentioned, uh, pike or, or perch or something like that. I mean, shoot, we caught that, uh, that Northern up there when we were on the ice. On the ice. And he had some incredible coloring. Oh, wow. Uh, I, didn't you catch a perch while you were up there? I did. I think I it was did. a yellow perch, right? Good crappie too, yeah. Yeah, so they've got some great patterns. Oh, yeah. As, as long as you cut it and clean it and, and do what you need to do, I don't see why, you I, know. I think it'll work out great. Not only that, I also think you should uh, hit us back and see yeah, how, yeah, let right. us know how it turns out. Yeah, We'd love to see it. Circle back, right? Yeah, yeah, Show yeah. us some pictures. We appreciate you watching the replay. Perfect. All right. So that takes care of the questions. Yeah. It's before 8 o'clock. Now it's time for the big giveaway. Um, thankfully, it's, you know, end of the month. We, we paid off Hunter's credit card. So let's, let's get the big one. Now we're talking an MHX SJ842 metallic multi-option kit. That's a great rod. So there's a number of different colors in there. Mm -hmm. You've got, in addition to the rod kit, multi-option kit, you're also gonna get snake skin and color preserver. So you can go wild with this. Absolutely. You know, um, that winner is coming out of YouTube mm -hmm. and it's Levi Shum. <sighs> Levi. We've seen you in there. I was going to say, I've talked to Levi plenty. Great, That's it. Great winner. So great congratulations. Like I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you came through. You made it. You're here. The grand prize winner for the night. An MJ, uh, MHX SJ842 metallic multi-option kit with snakeskin and color preserver. It's, it's awesome. It's very, very good. So we appreciate all the winners. Uh, Levi's in there helping yeah. out, asking questions. We oh, love yeah. that. Uh, of course, Jeff Johnson um, took care of the second 
place mm -hmm. prize coming out mm -hmm. of YouTube. And then, of course, Bill Leary Jr. coming out of Facebook. Fantastic. Absolutely. So, I love giving stuff away. Oh. Of course. How could you not? How could you it's not? It's the best part. Christmas yeah. all year. Uh, let's see. For the uh, winners, make sure you either DM uh, Facebook, send us a direct message, yep. and uh, we can take care of you. Make sure you claim your prize. We'll get your email and address and all that to get it to you. Uh, for YouTube, if you want to just send me an email, my email is mmcguffee -E at mudhole.com. That is mmcguffee at mudhole.com. And I will be happy to take care of you. Two E's on McGuffey, right? Two E's. Two F's, two E's. If you use a Y, he gets mad. Ain't going to work. Don't ask me how Ain't I gonna know. Ain't going to work. <laughs> so, awesome. Well, and speaking of McGuffey, you did a great job, man. Thanks. This I was, was going to say. This was awesome. They made it easy on me. I didn't get too many personal questions, nothing crazy. I didn't throw too much at you, you did No, I? you didn't. You no. did a good job. I will say, though, mcguffey has been test driving the new CRB Pro Step Stool. He's done a good job tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, got him, we got him where he needed to be on camera. So he did a great job. And, uh, you know, that's, that's R&D for you right there. It's metallic blue, 10-inch uh, <laughs> stool. It's fantastic. So, um, all right. Guys, we can't. Guys and girls, rod builders everywhere. We cannot thank you enough uh, for joining my left-hand man, Matt McGuffey, and I for the show tonight for Snakeskin. 70. Right. 70. 70. Halfway to 140. That's it. Um, again, thanks to all the winners. Congratulations. We love giving stuff away. We appreciate y'all watching. Now, hit them with the photo contest again. I was going to say, we got more winners coming in June, the end of June. Uh, look for the photo contest, hashtag build to win. It's going to be guide wraps. We want to see colors. We want to see all the patterns you're dreaming up. And we want to see you pack them tight and do a good job, too. So send them in uh, by June 28th. Okay. And we'll vote on them, and we'll do another round. Sweet. And that's in the Mud Hole Live. The Mud Hole Live Rod, Rod Builders Workshop. 14,000 plus. We're sledding. I'm telling you. We're sledding. And honestly, all the members do such a good job. We appreciate yeah. everyone offering tips, sharing their builds. It's, uh, it's such a good community and a very positive, which we really appreciate. Yeah. I think, and I think that's what makes it. Absolutely. You know, we're, we're not in there. Uh, really having to police it. No, not Everybody too much. does a great job of kind of the camaraderie in there is great. Mm -hmm. You know, people mm -hmm. are helping each other out. They're supporting each other, answering questions, showing a little, showing a little rod building yeah. swag, which we yeah, love. We absolutely. love. Everybody loves that. And of course, everybody's great and supportive. Um, and that is why it's 14,000 strong, for sure. So and it's going. really y'all's group. So we appreciate it, for sure. And growing. Now remember, yep. all products from the show tonight, every single one, yep. you need, and they're at mudhole.com slash MHL. Exactly. So visit that URL, get stocked up, and we want to see your snakeskin. So make sure you share it and tag us on social media. We appreciate it. No doubt. And of course, we cannot leave until we talk about the mud blog. So the mud blog. we have a blog we on snakeskin among Absolutely. tens of thousands of other topics, right? I can't tell you how many words I've put into blogs here. A ton. But it's good. All of them. It's Almost really good. All of the words. We're talking pictures. In the world. Yes. Talking pictures. We're talking yep. links. Oh, yeah. We're talking step by step. It's got it all. We got GIFs now, which is like an image, but it's kind of like a video, but it's kind of like an it. Yeah. It's incredible stuff. It's called Guff's GIFs. That's right. Yeah, that's and right. And it's in the mud blog. So you can does, buy them. He does a heck of a job. So you know what? Rather than just always playing on social media, do a little bit of reading. Yeah. You know? He puts a lot of work into it, it's and it is good you. stuff. So It's good for you. Tips, tricks, all the stuff you're looking for in between the shows, in between the group. Yes. Check out the blog. Absolutely. Well, it's 8.01, so we probably ought to get up for mom's lasagna. Um, to everybody, again, thank you for watching. Congratulations to the winners. We got the photo contest coming soon. Uh, the new one is out, so make sure you hit that. Uh, to everybody that helped tonight, I think we had some... Uh, Customer support team. We did. I think we did. We have Sean and Jake, maybe, in the war room. I want to say we had Sean, Jake. We had some new employees. Stuart is in there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Got, you guys will meet Stuart at some point. Absolutely. The, uh, the wholesalers growing. and distributors will meet him for mm -hmm. sure. We had Brooke mm -hmm. in the building. Tom was here. We oh, had, yeah. uh, of course, Taylor. Of course, too. Who I hope he did okay without you. I know. Normally, we hold hands and answer comments together. And you say, guys are a one-two punch. <laughs> Can't it's happen. like shake yeah. and bake. Shake and bake. Absolutely. So, yes, for everybody in the war room, of course, and Steve, I think you did a great job on the Zoom. I think everything was great. Uh, and, of course, Jay. 
on the ones and twos, showing some video stuff tonight. It was fantastic. Um, great first show. I was going to say, I feel good. Here he is, my left-hand man lie. for tonight. Subbing okay. in for Hunter, Matt McGuffey. Guys, I'm Chris Adams. Thank you again for watching Mud Hole Live. Uh, let us know what you want to see next time. We'll see you in three weeks. Thanks, guys. Have a great one.